In this video, we'll use some simple DingScript code along with the scan tab to find opportunities in the marketplace with this bear market crash using the price to book value ratio. Now there's two parts of this tutorial that we'll be going through. The first is just scanning for stocks in which the price to book value ratio is now between 0 and 1.0. That's step one. Once we identify a list of stocks that meet this criteria, we'll then compare their historical price to book value ratio to find stocks in which that price to book value ratio does not typically live within this range. What you'll find is a lot of stocks have that sub 1.0 ratio, so we're not getting any sort of a quote unquote deal there. However, for stocks that say typically have a ratio greater than 1.0, with it coming underneath 1.0, now there's opportunities that you can try and take advantage of. So that's the goal of today's tutorial. We'll use the scan tab, we'll write some simple thing script on the indicator tab, and then we'll also use some other websites to help make this process a little bit more streamlined. Let's get started with diving into Thinkorswim and starting by scanning first and then moving on to writing some custom code. Now inside of your Thinkorswim platform, head over to the Scan tab, and there you should have a blank slate, or if you already have some filters loaded on, go ahead and remove them so we can start from scratch. Now the first thing is selecting a group of stocks you'd like to scan within. I use the All Optionable list here that's inside of Category, and then select All Optionable. I find that to be a good starting point with a list of stocks that you can actually do something in terms of with the information you gather, they're tradable stocks, they're fairly liquid, and they have options. So that's a good starting point for me. Now we can get started with adding our first filter here, which is going to be another liquidity filter. There I'll select add filter, select study, inside of this drop down list, select volume, and there select average volume. This allows us to create an average volume filter where the average volume over the past 50 days should have been at least a million shares, and this uses the simple moving average. So that's one way that we can again make sure that the list of stocks we get are stocks that we can make good use of and actually spend some further time researching without wasting that time. Now another filter we can add, which is now our fundamental filter, is going to be around the book value. So select fundamental there in this drop down list. You'll notice there's a bunch of different ratios, fundamental filters that you can scan for. The one we're looking for is price to book value ratio, which is right down here below. Select that. I'll leave the second filter as current, and then we can create our min value as greater than zero and our max value as less than 1.0. You'll notice this now shrinks the total watch list that we have, or the total stocks that meet this filter. Now I have show set to 500, and we can go ahead and run the scan to see what we get to start out with. Once we run the scan, we'll notice we have 204 stocks and we're looking to try and pay attention to stocks here, not ETFs like SPY. I filtered or sorted the filter rather through volume uh, in ascending manner so we can see the greatest volume stocks here first. And let's scroll down and find a stock that stands out to us. So Citigroup is one that stands out. Let's go ahead and explore Citigroup a little bit further, and we can now start with writing some very thing, uh, simple ThinkScript code to see what the historical price to book value ratio has been for Citigroup. For that, head over to the Charts tab, select the Studies icon, and there click Create. Now we can remove all of the code inside and start by defining the two different pieces we need for our price to book value ratio. The first is, of course, price. That can be tracked using the closing price, so that's fairly simple. The second is book value, and for that, there's a function that Thinkorswim gives us, which is book value per share, which takes two different parameters. The first is the symbol, and the second is the fiscal period, and if you read this notation here, it'll tell you that the fiscal period needs to be set to fiscal period dot year. Now this gives us one limitation, which is in terms of the historical ratio, that will stop at the end of last year since we don't have the full value for this year. So for the current value, we can use something like say Yahoo Finance. This gives you the current price to book value ratio, or you can even use something like Coifin, which is free, which also gives you that ratio. We'll practice using both of those in just a second, but let's start by first using this function to create this ratio inside of Thinkorswim. Again, our goal here is to identify those stocks in which that price to book value ratio does not typically live below that 1.0 level. So let's start by first defining price here. So I'll say def current, and there we can set current equal to close, fairly simple. Our second 
uh, variable here can be book value, and there we can use the function we just found inside a think script, book value per share. Remember that takes two parameters. The first is symbol, so we can use get symbol, so it gets the symbol of whatever chart you're on. And the second was fiscal period, so there we can set this equal to fiscal period dot year. Now once we have both of these variables, we can calculate the ratio. So I'll say plot, since we'd like to actually see this ratio. We'll say plot ratio is equal to cur divided by book value. So now we have our price to book value ratio. If I click OK, and we move this to the lower pane, apply. On a chart of SPY, we should see nothing. If we switch over instead to Citigroup, we can see that price to book value ratio plotting as we would expect. Now notice this stops at the beginning or the end, excuse me, of last year. And that's again because we don't have the data to calculate what the current ratio is. So that's where we can use something like Yahoo Finance or Coifin. So let's start with using Yahoo Finance here first. And actually, before we do that, what should stand out here is inside of Citigroup, the ratio inside of Citigroup has typically lived below that 1.0 level. Let's make this a little easier to see and I'll create a line here that just plots a vertical line at the number one, just so we can see is it typically above one or is it typically below one? So if I click apply, this makes it a little easier to see that the price to book value ratio inside of Citigroup has for the most part over the past this is, uh, 10 years has been below that 1.0 level. So there's no quote unquote deal to be had here. The ratio typically lives below that 1.0 mark. Let's come back to the scan tab here. Let's find some other stocks. We have Wells Fargo, we have General Motors. Let's look at both of those next. So Wells Fargo next. Inside of Wells Fargo here, we can see the ratio does for the most part live above that 1.0 level. And if we go to General Motors next, same thing as well here. The ratio for the most part has been above 1.0. And according to the scan tab, it's telling us that the current ratio is below 1.0. So we would expect a regression to the mean in sorts with the price to book value ratio. It's a good starting point in terms of finding undervalued stocks using one specific approach of many. So let's start now with seeing what the current book to value or price to book value ratio is. I have General Motors loaded on here. To find where we are, we go to Yahoo Finance. We're running the quote for GM. Inside of there, select statistics. And within the statistics panel, you'll find the price to book value ratio where the first tab is current. And there we can see that ratio is in fact below 1.0, 0.80. And you can also see how that value has changed over the past four quarters here going all the way back to 2021. So what we are finding is that price to book value ratio is below 1.0 and typically or historically rather, it has stayed above 1.0 inside of General Motors. Let's repeat the same exercise for Wells Fargo as well. So that's WFC. I can simply just change that inside of the URL here. So I'll run this for WFC. We come down, we take a look at the price to book value ratio, and there we can see that ratio is above 1.0. So this gives us the discrepancies, the sort of discrepancies that you'll see with trying to use the scan tab that you need to be aware of. Now you can compare this value with another data source as well to see which is more accurate here, Thinkorswim or Yahoo Finance. The second data source we can use is Coifin. This is, uh, I'm on the free version of Coifin, so anyone can sign up. Let's start by searching for a ticker here. So we'll start with Wells Fargo here. And inside of Wells Fargo, if you scroll down, you should find a tab that says multiples. We'll click that so we can go ahead and jump directly to multiples here. Let this load. And once it loads, coming down here, we can find the price to book value ratio where we can see one more time, the current ratio, that's the last tab here, is greater than 1.0. So here we can chalk up Thinkorswim as not being as accurate as some of these other data sources with having the current uh, latest and greatest price to book value ratio. Let's look at the second stock that we looked at as well, which is General Motors. So same idea, General Motors, select multiples. And we'll let that load. And once it loads, price to book value ratio, we can see how that ratio has changed over time. And currently, that ratio is below that 1.0 level. So from this research, what we found so far, Citigroup, uh, out of the three stocks we looked at, Citigroup, the ratio is below 1.0, but typically tends to lift below 1.0. 
Wells Fargo, Thinkorswim is telling us the ratio is below 1.0, but our two other data sources we compared it with tells us that the ratio is currently above the 1.0. General Motors, however, we found a nice little undervalued sort of opportunity there where General Motors, the price to book value ratio is below 1.0, suggesting that there might be a good deal to, uh, to be had there. We also used historical data here to prove using Thinkorswim that the ratio is above 1.0. And you could also compare that using, say, Coifin, where we saw how that ratio has changed over time or even something as simple as say Yahoo Finance if you find that to be a little bit easier for you to use as well. The whole idea here is we have a multifaceted approach. We first scanned for price to book value ratios between 0 and 1.0 to give us a starting point, a nice list. You can of course add in additional filters here to narrow down this 204 list down even further. You then take that group of stocks, run it through the charts tab here using this very simple code that we created which calculated the price to book value ratio from scratch, but it allowed us to see how that ratio has changed over time. The goal here is to find stocks in which that ratio has typically been greater than 1.0. And we then used all of that information to compare one more time with Yahoo Finance and Coifin. I hope you found this video useful. For those of you looking to try and find some decent opportunities, some decent deals to be had, especially once we pass, say, earnings, in this case for General Motors, that would open up a decent opportunity here where General Motors might be on your radar. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading this week, and I'll see you in the next update.